In this session, we are going to discuss how to solve convergent and discriminant validity issues. Recently, I have received a number of emails whereby scholars have asked how to solve convergent and discriminant validity issues. Now, there is no easy answer, but still, I will try to explain what could be done to solve the problems and what should not be done when you are trying to solve the problems. Now, before you collect the data, it, it starts well before you are starting to collect the data. It starts when you are preparing your questionnaire. Once you have operationalized your constructs and once you have started to develop, design your research questionnaire, you should be cautious of a few things. Number one, make sure you have got adequate number of items in each scale or construct. Now, failure to have adequate number of items will result in problems when you are trying to solve your convergent and discriminant validity issues. Because in SCM, items are deleted if they fail to load or they are cross-loading. So you should have at least four to six items in each of your construct. I normally tend to go for six items. Make sure that your items are worded correctly so that, they are that the respondents are able to understand the concept, the gist of the statement, and give you proper answers. Make sure that there is no overlapping in the statements in different constructs. Now, this could happen in social sciences research because the constructs may be closely related with each other. And the statements that actually measure the construct may overlap. For example, in marketing research, a statement in service quality may overlap a statement in satisfaction. So you have to make sure that the statements do not overlap. Now, what are the recommendations? How do we solve the problem? I'm going to look into practical demonstration of a model I've done in Smart PLS and try to solve the problems in front of you practically. But there are a few recommendations that one should consider. Number one, check for item loading. Now, if the loading is too low and removing the item can substantially improve the convergent validity, then only you remove the item. If removing the item does not improve the convergent validity, do not remove the item. Normally, what we do is if if the loading is less than 0.7 or 0.6, we tend to remove the item. But this does not improve the convergent validity suf uh, sufficiently because the convergent validity may already be 0.5 or 0.6 based on the AVE values. So you do not need to remove them. Now, what if you are trying to do everything and your discriminant validity issues persist? What should you do? You have no other option but to combine the constructs that have got a very high correlation in the region of 0.8 or 0.9. And this is um, a solution to convert, uh, discriminant validity issues. So, in such cases, researchers can collapse the measures into a single construct rather than doing analysis dimension by dimension. However, if none of the methods presented address the issue, what could we do? Now, in that case, a researcher may have to collect additional data to determine whether discriminant validity or multicollinearity issues are a result of sampling flukes. Maybe there is a sampling error. So you might need more data in order to be sure that this issue is not because of your sampling. And still, if the problem persists, well, there is no other option but to drop one or more independent variables that are collinear or that show higher correlation and causing the issue of discriminant validity. And this may help you solve the discriminant validity issue. But obviously, this is a hard pill to swallow. And check for cross-loadings. If an item is cross-loading, and the difference is less than 0.0, remove the item. 
Well, for further uh, details, you could look into this particular research paper. Now, let's look at the example in Smart PLS. So, I've got this model here, one model. Looks a bit complex, uh, but for now, just for the sake of understanding, now let's run the model. We go to calculate, PLS algorithm, everything looks fine. Let's start. Now look at the con construct reliability and validity. All good. There is no issue of average variance extracted or convergent validity. No issue. But let's look at the loadings. If you look at the loading, this is red. So some of the scholars may think, well, this could be removed. This is another red. Well, no, we are not going to remove these items. Why? Because this is not going to improve your convergent validity substantially. And there is a reference for it. Here is uh, my paper. And in that particular paper, we had a similar issue whereby a reviewer said that maybe the item could be removed. And we justified that, okay, it's uh, section 4.1. And here it is. First, the factor loadings. Obviously, when you are checking your measurement model, the first thing that you do is you go for factor loadings. Have a value greater than 0.50. So that was the minimum factor loading that I took in this paper. Although factor loadings over 0.7 are acceptable or desirable, researchers may get a weaker loading, less than 0.7 in social sciences studies. So rather than just deleting those, automatically deleting those items, an item with loading for 0.40 to 0.70 shall be considered for removal only if the deletion results or deletion results in an increase in composite reliability or average variance extracted over the recommended values. So you only delete the items if they are substantially increasing your composite reliability and average variance extracted. If that's not the case, then you should not remove the items. So if the item, removal of item, is improving the CR value or AVE, AVE over the recommended value, then only you should delete the item. Now let's move towards a discriminant validity because most of the times this is a major issue. So how do you solve discriminant validity issues? So here I've got an example. Here is a sample model. And let's run this model and see what issues uh, do we face. So we go to PLS algorithm and we start. We look at construct reliability and validity, all good. We go to discriminant validity and let's look at HTMT because that's like much more visual and much more clearer. Now look at these red values. And these black ones may be fine, but the, look at these red values. There are severe issues of discriminant validity in this data. Although, like all of these issues may, may not be solved in this particular example. But I'm going to give you suggestions as to what could be done. Now look at this. Let's start with a few easier ones. Now look at this, 0.904. So the HTMT ratio between AIC and OC is 0.904. Let's look at the loadings of AIC and OC. But before that, let's look at the Cornell and Larker criteria, AIC and OC, 0.874. Now this value here, 0.874, is the square root of AVE for AIC. And this should be greater than all the values underneath. Is it greater? Yes. But this is very close to AIC 0.874 very close to 0.806, although this is higher. But the new criterion, HTMT criterion says, well, there is an issue. Let's address this issue. Let's look at the cross loadings. AIC, here is AIC, and here is OC. So let's see AIC. Where are the items for AIC? Here they are, sorry. AIC. AIC. So here are the three items for AIC. 0.869, obviously, AIC1, AIC2, AIC3 are the items for AIC. So they are loading well onto their own parent factor. So let's compare it with OC here, 0 0.727, 0 0.7, 0 0.869. So the difference is obviously greater than 0 0.10. So there is no issue here. 
the difference is greater than 0 0.10 no issue here the difference is greater than 0 0.10 no issue here now let's compare OC with AIC so OC1 here is OC1 OC2 OC3 OC4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are multiple items. OC1 to OC10. So if we look here, let's see OC1, OC2. These are the items. So these items are loading well onto their own parent factor. Obviously, the difference here is greater than 0.10. 0.623, greater than, obviously greater than, this is very slightly greater than 0 0.10, 0 0.756 minus 0.647. This is fine, this is fine, this is fine, 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 this is fine as well, this is fine as well. So we see that there is not much of an issue. And still, the value is 0 0.904, very slightly over 0 0.90, which is, according to a few authors, is acceptable. So, you might not delete any item for now. Let's look at a few more complex ones. Let's look at this one, AC and KOL, 0 .911, 0 0.919, sorry. So, where is AC? Here is AC. AC is represented by A1, A2, A3. So here is AC, all three items loading well onto its own parent factors. Let's see if they are loading well onto the other factor as well, KOL. Well, this is fine, this is fine as well, and this is fine as well. Now let's compare KOL with OC. And once we compare KOL with OC, here are the items. 0 0.808, 0 0.640. So KOL item loading well onto its own parent factor instead of AC, this is fine. 0 0.870, 0 0.675, this is fine. 0 0.822, 0 0.660, this is fine. 0 0.830, 0 0.675, this is fine. 0 0.841, 0 0.703, this is fine as well. 0 0.833, 0 0.673, this is fine as well. So this could happen as well. The differences are greater than 0 0.10 and the items are loading well onto their own parent factor. So there are no issues when coming to or when discussing the, the, the cross loadings. But there are issues because obviously the difference might be low. The difference might not be large enough and the item is loading well onto the other factor as well. Look at this 0 0.703. This is above the recommended value. So let's for example let's remove KOL5. Let's remove KOL5 and see what happens. So where is KOL and AC? Now the difference is reduced. The difference is reduced. Now look at this KOL and OC. This is fine. This is again, if you remove KOL2, the problem may be entirely solved. But you have to decide between KOL2 and KOL4. Obviously, the loading for KOL2 is higher. So we may remove KOL4 because the item is also loading quite well onto the other construct. But let's look at another example. Let's look at this one here, KOL and OC. KOL and OC. Previously, it was AC, now OC. So let's look at KOL and OC. Let's go to cross loadings. Now, when comparing KOL and OC, if you look here, KOL and OC, the difference is it's very close to 0 0.10, but less than 0 0.10. This is slightly over 0 0.10. But if we remove these two items here, you might not be left with much in KOL and this will certainly impact the content validity, how you have operationalized your, con uh, your concept or your construct and 
the way you have operationalized you might not have measured the concept in a similar manner because you have deleted two items and it's only left with maybe three or four items so what you could do is you could compare OC with QOL and remove items from OC because OC has got higher number of items in comparison to KOL. So let's see OC here and OC KOL. Look at this. You can remove OC1 because the difference is very narrow. You can remove OC2. Now looking at the other ones, we can, well this is fine. This is problematic, OC5. So OC1, OC2, OC5, they may be removed. Well, this is fine. This is fine. This is slightly fine. This is fine. So OC1, OC2, OC5 may be removed. So let's remove OC1, OC2, and OC5. You may do it stepwise or you can do it all together as well. But it's better that if you do it stepwise. So if you remove these and let's see, calculate PLS algorithm, start, discriminant validity, and let's see OC and KOL. It's 0 0.930. Although reduced, but the problem still is there. But anyways, this was uh, just the sample data just to have a look at it. So these are the steps that one could take to solve the problem pertinent to discriminant validity. What if your problem is not getting solved? What should you do then? Now in that particular case, you should report your cross loadings and you should tell the reviewer that your cross loadings are greater than recommended 0 0.10. Your Farner and Larker criterion is fine as well. So based on this, you can cautiously go ahead and say that to a certain extent discriminant validity was established but still look at the cross loadings and try to solve these problems under these recommendations so if you've got very high correlation let's say 0 0.8 0 0.9 so which one are 0 0.8 0 0.9 here look at this cl and kol but can you merge them theoretically are they the sub-dimensions of a single construct? You have to look into that as well. In this case, and this was just um, a fictitious model. So in your case, you will have to look into higher correlations and see if they are sub-dimensions for a single higher order construct, you could merge those sub-dimensions as well. I hope the video would have helped you understand how to solve convergent and discriminant validity issues. Thank you very much.